So Meals on Wheels Montgomery County started over 47 years ago. It was a grassroots uh, mission. It actually started uh, off in a little house off 3rd Street um, out of a kitchen. And today it's grown to serve the entire Montgomery County. We're over a thousand square miles. Um, it's a quite a large territory to cover. Um, in our mission, we not only serve hot meals, which is what we're most known for, but we also have transportation services. So our medically fragile clients that are in wheelchairs and need dialysis, we're able to provide ADA transportation. We are the only agency in Montgomery County that provides free transportation. So before COVID-19, our kitchen was preparing hot meals for about 650 clients. Uh, every day they received these meals. We had over 200 volunteers that would deliver them. Given the fact that we knew we were gonna to have to scale back the volunteers due to social uh, isolation, we had to change our strategy. And so we moved to having the hot meal delivery every day to having a once a week frozen meal delivery so that we could still provide the nutrition for our seniors, but in a safe way, honoring social distancing. Well, we recently moved into this kitchen. We've only been here less than a month. In our uh, former kitchen, we had one stove top. As you can see, we have seven now. So our capacity to expand is huge, which was critical during this time when we had so many more requests for service. Um, as we know, senior population is the most vulnerable population for uh, most at risk uh, during this time. And so our um, ability to meet the demand of seniors calling in uh, is huge for us. And so we're very, very grateful to, to be in our new space. This is where our frozen meals are kept. This is our walk-in freezer. Um, I always tell people this door does not lock. Uh, it's the first thing everyone wants to know when they come for a tour is they don't want to step inside and I promise you it does not lock. Um, but we prepare the meals and then we divide them out into uh, individual uh, unique portions so they're not eating the same thing. Our seniors actually don't eat the same meal twice in a month something different every single day, which I find amazing because I eat the same thing twice, sometimes daily. So, uh, I walk in the future. All right, we're gonna go on a tour now. We're gonna get on the bus, go deliver some meals to some clients. I'm gonna put on my mask since we're going into the common area, but follow me. So before COVID-19, uh, our seniors relied on that, we call it a caring connection. Um, the communication, the daily check-in from our volunteers, they become like family to them. And it's really important and they rely on that uh, communication with the community. They are isolated. I think that's one of the ironies of what our community has gone through is that we've all experienced what our seniors experience every day. Social isolation is hard. It's, it's difficult on you mentally, physically, emotionally. And so our seniors have really missed that day-to-day, face-to-face interaction. We have done Caring Connection phone calls where we call them to check in, ask them how they're doing, make sure that they have their medicines refilled. Um, you know, a lot of them are challenged because they can't get to doctor appointments and so they don't understand the virtual, how that works with the, with the doctor appointments. And so just working through that with them, I know they're very ready to see their volunteers again and our volunteers are very ready to get back and, and see their people again. So one of the blessings that has come out of this partnership uh, with the funding is that we are able to meet other needs that typically are outside of our mission. We serve seniors, however, seniors aren't the only ones that are socially isolated and needing nutrition. And so I received a phone call from the executive director of Children's Books on Wheels, which uh, she operates out of a very low income community in Tamina which is just outside the woodlands. And she had a need for food. Those kiddos are on the free and reduced lunch program. They're no longer in school. Their parents are furloughed. Um, the pantries are empty. She said, anything you can do. And so I immediately called United Way and said, would it be possible to allocate some of this funding if we prepared food to, to deliver? And immediately the answer was yes. It, this is what the funding is for to meet the most vulnerable at this time. And so we currently deliver 150 hot meals every single day to the community center for those families there that have uh, self-identified as being food fragile.